With very few exceptions, no one had more input into the unparalleled success of the Eastern softball program in the 1980s than Cynthia Walls Washburn. Each season during Cynthia's playing and coaching career between 1982 and 1987, the Warriors won a regional championship. Three times they claimed the ultimate prize, a Division III national title. As a player, the East Hartford, Connecticut native lettered four seasons between 1982 and 1985 and remained with the program as an assistant coach for the next two years. As a freshman in 1982, she was a reserve outfielder and pinch runner on the first NCAA national championship team. As the only senior in 1985, Cynthia's leadership and clutch hitting figured prominently in the program's third national championship. With Cynthia serving as an assistant coach in 1986, the Warriors made it three national titles in five seasons. Cynthia's crowning achievement came on the final day of her playing career when she drove in the only runs of either game with first inning two out doubles as the Warriors shut out their despised rival Trenton State College twice on the final day by scores of 1-0 to win the 1985 NCAA Division III National Championship at Howard Specter Field. Cynthia spent full seasons at designated hitter and first base where she was named all New England at each of those two positions. A right-handed cleanup hitter, Cynthia batted 345 with 83 runs batted in and 160 total bases. As a left-handed first baseman, she collected 445 putouts with a 967 fielding percentage. As a rule, Cynthia was at her best when postseason tournament time rolled around especially when the stakes were at the highest in national tournaments. In 14 national tournament games in three years, Cynthia batted 45 percentage points above her regular season average. She is one of only two players in program history to earn a spot on the national tournament all-tournament team as many as three times. Cynthia led the team and runs batted in each of her last three starting seasons, the first to achieve that feat in program history and in hits and total bases as a junior and senior. In her career, she struck out just 13 times in 333 career at-bats, roughly once every seven games. Good afternoon <clears throat> to all. Congratulations to all the 2008 Hall of Fame inductees. And a special shout out to Cynthia. To you all gathered here at this festive event, please hear a few of my words <coughs> to, about, and for Cynthia. Cindy, dear lady, recall, if you will, and picture a few coaches in your past. Say, uh, Coach Sayers, Coach Cliff Ong, Coach June Walker, and Coach Jeffrey Anderson. Billy Sayers, former pitching coach at Eastern, would be so damn proud of you. He is the guy that talked you into coming to Eastern Connecticut State University. He'd say, damn, I knew that girl would do it. Pitching coach Cliff Ong, regarding Cliff, Cliff wanted you to be a pitcher at Eastern. He claimed that your epileptic fastball uh, didn't get enough time, and I should uh, allow you more pitching time to become all you could become. You probably would have been awesome, very impressive at it, but it didn't work out that way. Instead, June Walker kind of nail hit the nail on the head when she regarded you as a natural hitter. She said to me in a trip to South Carolina, she said, Clyde, that skinny kid, number 16, she is a natural. June Walker had those words come back at her in the 1985 series when Walker didn't walk you. And you drove in. The only two runs scored in the final day, one to nothing, one to nothing. And we were the champions in 1985 and you wrapped the ball. I do believe two things. One, that you were the best first baseman I saw, regardless of the level of one, two, or three. And the reason you were was because of the efforts of Coach Jeff Anderson, my former assistant, infield coach, who worked with you tirelessly. Your stats, Cynthia, are most impressive. 
darn, I didn't know all that. And his stats are a chronicle of your performance to a point, a measure, if you will. They do not, however, measure or express leadership, impact as captain, counselor, sometimes chaperone, and clutch performer for the Warriors. The biggest thing I could say about Cindy, I think she's really a genuine person. Uh, she doesn't have any f fronts or anything. She is what she is. I think she was just as genuine when she was 18 years old, a freshman coming here, first, uh, first person in her family to go to college. Uh, she was just a genuine, genuine 18 year old kid and I, I, I don't think that's changed. Hi Cindy, this is Kim DeRosha Wise. I would like to congratulate you on making it into the Hall of Fame at Eastern Connecticut. It was a terrific opportunity and privilege for me to play the game of softball with you. Thank you for always being there when I needed your help, for the many wonderful memories, and mostly your friendship. Congratulations. She played first base and was a great first baseman because she was left-handed, and Coach Washburn always jokes about before or Cindy with that little narrow area down the right field line, he says his, uh, his pitchers would get, a, get tired running over, try to catch the, the pop-up bunts and things. And when Cindy came, the pitchers didn't have to run after those anymore. Cindy just went and got them. Hi, Cindy. This is Eric Gelbart. I want to congratulate you on your induction into the Eastern Connecticut State University Hall of Fame. I remember you well, having played against you for four years. I look back and see a player who was far ahead of her time. At that point, you did all the things that I look for and look for in a player. Uh, you could throw, run, hit, catch, and your game awareness certainly was outstanding. I'm pleased and smiling to the nth degree. This day for the E-Club Selection Committee has chosen you a most, most deserving person, a former player as a 2008 Hall of Fame inductee. Much love, Clyde, enjoy your day.